Can anyone tell me what amyloid actually is? Hello Dr. Humans, welcome back to the channel and today's video which is all about the concept of amyloid. Now the topic of amyloid is huge and it's also highly specialised. So you don't need to know incredible amounts of detail about amyloid as a physician trainee. But the basics of amyloid can definitely show up in your exams. And so what I want to do today is convey the concept of amyloid so that you can actually understand it, visualize it and apply it where you need to, be that in your MCQs or in your clinical work. And let's be honest, it just feels really good to have a scooby-doo what's going on whenever someone mentions the word amyloid. So that's the goal. And um, once you're done here, if you do want to take things a step further and boss even more mysterious hematological topics such as cryoglobulinemia, monoclonal gammopathies, myeloma, cast nephropathy, MGRS, tumor lysis syndrome, and so much more, then there is an awesome resource available on our website. It's a 90 minute workshop complete with MCQs covering all of these juicy topics. That workshop is available inside our deluxe membership, which is our 12 month all access pass to help you learn renal topics in record time, boss those MCQs, and take the pain out of studying for your exams. So if that sounds like something you need in your life, then be sure to head on over there and check that out on our website. I'll leave a link below. But now it's time to conquer the concept of amyloid. So first of all, what is amyloid? The concept of amyloid is basically when a small protein that the body normally makes for some physiological purpose becomes prone to misfolding, typically due to a genetic predisposition or as part of the aging process. And when the protein is misfolded, it takes on a molecular structure which makes it join up with more of the same misfolded protein. And so all of these little proteins join together in tissues to form these beta pleated sheets or fibrils. And it's these beta pleated sheets or fibrils that are the amyloid. So regardless of the initial protein that created the amyloid, the amyloid is the fibrils. And these fibrils, when deposited in various tissues, tend to cause damage to those tissues. And the deposition of amyloid in various tissues depends on where the protein is generated and whether it's present in only that tissue or within the circulation. So some forms of amyloid are entirely localized to a tissue because that tissue is generating that protein from the inside. Whilst on the other hand, systemic amyloidosis is due to proteins that are in our circulation. These can whiz around the body and deposit in multiple different organs and tissues. So amyloid can be localized or systemic. But regardless of the tissue affected or the type of amyloid that we are dealing with, amyloid always looks the same under the microscope. I repeat, no matter what type of amyloid we're dealing with, no matter the protein that created it in the first place, if we take a biopsy of any tissue containing amyloid, it always looks the exact same under the microscope. Because amyloid is... Amyloid. And so now I have a question for you. What does amyloid look like on a biopsy? I'll give you a clue. There are two biopsy buzzwords that go along with amyloid. What are those biopsy buzzwords? Pause if you need to, commit to your answer, and then hit play. Okay, so the biopsy buzzwords are Congo red positive and apple green birefringens. If you see these words in your exams or in doctor life, it's amyloid. It's nothing else but amyloid. It's amyloid. <laughs> so now let's break down what these terms actually mean. Congo red positive means that we have used a light microscope, we've stained that tissue with a Congo red stain, and the Congo red stain is positive. Too easy. Now, apple green birefringence is when we take that same biopsy sample, but we use a different type of microscopy to look at it. And that type of microscopy is known as polarized light microscopy. So in normal light microscopy, the microscope has a bulb and that bulb is emitting light in every direction. But in polarized light microscopy, we use the same light source, but then we apply filters along the path of that light to create two beams of light. 
So filter one will focus that light source into a single beam and then filter two will split that light into two beams of light. And then we look at that same sample through the new microscope setup and we see this beautiful, sparkly, apple green birefringence, which is ironically very beautiful, despite the fact that amyloid itself is far from beautiful when it affects our patients. So Congo red positive and apple green birefringence it's amyloid. It can only be amyloid. It's amyloid. <laughs> and whilst all amyloid fibrils look the same under the microscope, the type of amyloid is determined by the protein subunit that led to that amyloid in the first place. And apparently there are more than 30 proteins in humans that have been associated with the formation of amyloid. Many of these are localized forms of amyloid that are specific to various tissues. But the ones that I want you to memorize today are the proteins which lead to systemic amyloidosis. These are the ones that tend to show up in your MCQs in your exams. So let's lock this in people. So firstly, light chains. Light chains are parts of antibodies and can either be kappa or lambda. And misfolded light chains are the cause of AL amyloidosis. This type of amyloidosis happens in monoclonal gammopathies, meaning hematological conditions in which you have a B cell, or plasma cell population that is generating a lot of the same antibody or light chain again and again and again and again. And if that light chain is prone to misfolding, it can result in amyloid. And it's important to point out that you don't need to have full-blown myeloma to have amyloid. AL amyloidosis can happen with plain old MGUS, monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. Although if you did have amyloid from NGUS, then the clinical significance would no longer be undetermined. And in fact, it would be extremely determined and clinically relevant. And that person now needs some form of chemotherapy. Just saying. So that's AL amyloidosis. Now, another protein which can lead to systemic amyloidosis is serum amyloid protein. This is an acute phase reactant which can lead to AA amyloidosis, which is a type of amyloidosis that we see in people with autoimmune disease or chronic infections. ATTR amyloid is due to a protein known as transthyretin and beta-2 microglobulin is the protein associated with dialysis-related amyloidosis. So lock in those causes of systemic amyloidosis for MCQs in your future. Now, one last thing that I want to emphasize is that amyloid is a biopsy diagnosis. There is no blood test for amyloid. And whilst I've just mentioned these proteins that lead to amyloid do exist in the circulation, when they are in the circulation, they run around looking entirely normal. And they don't become amyloid until they aggregate together inside tissues to form those fibrils. So there's no blood test for amyloid specifically. Amyloid is a tissue diagnosis. Now, of course, if you find amyloid in a tissue, especially when you're thinking about these systemic causes, then you are going to look at the context of the patient and search for that cause. And as I say, this is a very specialized area that you don't need to know a lot about at this stage. And getting to the bottom of the causes of amyloid and all that fine print stuff is a tutorial for another day. Okay, so that was the concept of amyloid for MCQs and Dr. Life. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this helped your studies and helped you to visualize what is going on when we're talking about amyloidosis. And of course, if you do want to take a deeper dive into monoclonal gammopathies, myeloma, cryoglobulins, and all of the hematological havoc that can affect my favorite organ, the kidney, then be sure to check out our deluxe membership where you can have access to that study sesh together with 16 other awesome learning experiences. They'll help you to act understand complex renal and immunology topics and take the pain out of studying for your exams. And otherwise, stay tuned here on YouTube for some more high-yield learning. Bye!